Hi, my name's Brenna Stahl, and I help even the most disorganized and defeated moms move from overwhelm and self-doubt into thrilling momentum as they take my seven strategies and apply them to their homes, getting their homes and lives more organized. So this morning, I wanna start with a little story. A story that I share in my book. I opened my eyes. Oh no, I overslept. Hopping out of bed, I rushed to wake the kids. I poured cold milk on cereal, slathered cream cheese on bagels, brushed hair, dispensed vitamins, then tossed sandwiches and fruit into lunch bags. Dylan and Caleb were riding their bikes to school, but Derek needed to me to take him by car since he was taking his violin and music bag. It was five minutes before departure time and I looked down at myself, flannel pajamas and red furry slippers. And I had no idea what my hair looked like as I had not even glanced in the mirror yet that morning. Should I get dressed? There is no time. I'll just slip on a coat and go as is. No one will ever know. I did fail to remember, however, that the day before while running errands, my car was not quick to start and my engine had died as I was turning into my driveway that afternoon. What is going wrong with our nine-year-old SUV? I wondered to myself, of course, car trouble comes when Chris is out of town. That morning, the choir re required a few tries before it started, but then we were up and running. Just as we approached the drop-off point, my car died again. Gas, <laughs> I thought. That had not even crossed my mind. Heart beating rapidly, I frantically looked at my gas gauge. It registered well below empty. Again, I glanced down at my crumpled pajamas and furry slippers and then out the window. Mary Kay-faced moms, dressed in cute, coordinated outfits, held their children's hands as they walked them across the crosswalk to the elementary school. Then the begging prayers began. Lord, I know this is all my fault. Please bail me out. Just then, the car started and I made it home to our gas can on fumes and a prayer. Later that day, I put more than 40 gallons of gas into my 40 gallon tank. Without being intentional, I know, I know it can get crazy. I'm a mother of seven, I'm a pastor's wife, we're in ministry. I know mornings can be crazy. Um, a family's day can easily get off on the wrong foot and we can feel behind, disappointed, confused, and even grumpy. So today, I've got a few points here, and I hope that you were able to print off your worksheet that is attached. Um, we're gonna talk about Miracle Morning Mom, four vital steps to reduce school morning stress. So there are four points. One is plan ahead, and then we've got primary prep, pre-prep, and the pull-off. So let's talk about planning ahead. And that is the weekend before that week for whatever school days you've got ahead of you. Three different steps. Plan the outfits. Plan what people are going to wear. Can I lay those out? Can I, do I happen to have one of those hanging closet organizers or should I get one where people can put their clothes in it for the week? What I wanna be sure to do is check the forecast and see what's going on, especially if you live in Texas or where the weather can drop 30 degrees in a day or go up 30 degrees in a day. What I really like to do when my kids were small enough that um, I was picking out all the clothes, I liked to color code because it just seemed like one less decision, you know? Like if one person's wearing blue, let's all wear blue. And I could go through and pick those things out methodically. So planning the outfits, picking out clothes for the week, greatly reduces stress. Number two, plan meals. So the biggest thing is if your kids are leaving to go to school somewhere and they need to make their lunches, it is so much easier to make them all on the weekend on Sunday and then just be able to grab them each morning of the week. So there are different ways you can do this. You can bag up small bags of carrots or grapes, things like that. You can put those in a like plastic shoebox size bin and keep them in the refrigerator. 
Uh, you can even make sandwiches. You really can. There are, you can, bread can be frozen. You can freeze meat. You can freeze cheese. You would just need, if your kids like to have lettuce or something on the side or onions, whatever, that would need to go in a separate thing in the refrigerator. But you can, you can freeze peanut butter and jelly. And these things thaw out very quickly, especially if it's during warmer weather, it's really good because it keeps the meat cool enough that it is thawed by lunchtime. So what I like about that is you've got one mess for the entire week. You've got one setup, one cleanup, and you can have everything there that you need. What we used to do was just get all the baggies out and the little containers and let people have at it. I would have a variety of breads, a variety of cheeses, meats, peanut butter and jelly, things like that, or whatever you might do. If you want to do salads or something like that, you can have those. It's easy to get those pre-prepared salads that are very easy to actually prepare either the night before or that morning. All right, so you've planned your outfits. This is the weekend before, planning the outfits, planning meals, and then number three is post the week's schedule on a wall calendar. So talking through, looking that, at that, we like to do it on Sunday night where we just look ahead at the week. We talk about different challenges, different um, things that will be going different with the schedules. And also it's a great idea, especially if you have kids that really like to, that are into details and feel really good about being informed and knowing what's expected. Some kids are more that way than others. So you know your kids, if they're like that, I really do recommend having some type of family wall calendar. And those type of kids really love to know what's on the menu for dinner too. So planning ahead on that, on that Sunday, while everyone's getting their lunches ready, while the kids are doing that, um, the other thing I like about that is they're doing their own lunches. That is key. And my kids started that when they were in kindergarten. They can do it. They really can. They don't have to have their lunch packed by you. Um, but while the kids were packing their lunches, I liked to kind of scan through the freezer, the fridge, see what we have and um, see what we need, plan some meals for the week and go ahead and get that on the calendar too. So. That's huge. If you can do those things, that will greatly reduce your stress right there. Second is primary prep. Get set for success. Now this has to do with organizing your home. And there are some steps that you can take that are just going to reduce your morning stress big time. And one of them is to have the most worn shoes in a basket near the door. Or if you have a mudroom, awesome, even better. But many people don't have a mudroom. We just had a basket and people put the shoes that they typically wore in a day, those would go there. And the rest would go in a bin that was a plastic bin with wheels. Without the lid, it was under their bed and they could just chunk the shoes in there and close it. But also one thing that I discovered when we moved to two-story homes was that we needed to have a place for socks because the shoes were right there, but if they had to run back upstairs and then run downstairs, that was gonna take extra time. So I liked to have a chest of drawers also somewhere close to the door so that they could each have a few pairs of socks in there. They were divided off, they had their names, and they could just pull a pair of socks out, put the shoes on and go out the door. The other thing that we found with two-story homes was having extras in the downstairs bathroom. So the extras like an extra toothbrush, an extra tube of toothpaste, then they can brush their teeth downstairs, um, lip balm, just make sure you put everyone's name on everything. Sunscreen, anything that they need, like last minute before going out, have those in a downstairs bathroom and it really, really cuts down on the hustle and bustle and frenzy. Number three is post checklists on the backs 
of doors or near the mirror in the bathroom. When you have checklists for your children in places where they can just review over it, that saves you from having to think and ask and do those things. And it also helps them develop more independence and more confidence and they're being more responsible. So I really encourage you to do checklists. If your kids can't read, what you can do is do pictures of everything that needs to go in their, their bags. Um, we'll talk about that more in the next, actually in the next point. So we have talked about planning ahead on the weekend. We've talked about primary prep, getting set for success in your home, just as far as organization goes. Now let's talk about pre-prep the night before. We're talking about reducing stress. So what are we going to do each night before we leave? Well, we are going to get the next day's set of clothes out and lay those out. And you know, I'm not really into ironing. So if you want to iron, do that the night before. If you're not into ironing, what I've always done is just go around with a spray bottle and hand press things. They're great by morning. Also, besides just getting the clothes laid out, you want to think about getting whatever needs to go out the door with them ready the next day. So that might be backpacks, that would be signing permission slips, signing the planners, whatever that might be. Um, making sure that homework's ready and then setting it either if you do have a mudroom or putting it near the door so that it's easy to get to. Now, if you know that you're going to have a quick transition between a school day and then extracurricular activities, you need a dance bag or something like that, Go ahead and pack that the night before too. Have the kids pack those, have them right by the door and they are ready to go. So we've got clothes ready, we've got the bags are packed, and then we wanna think about kitchen. What are we gonna do the night before in order to cut down on the stress of the morning? Well, one thing we're gonna do is run the dishwasher and tidy things up. Um, we'll program the uh, coffee maker the night before. If you like to have your coffee, just have it ready to go. And you might make overnight oatmeal. Um, they've got recipes for like steel cut oats that we love to do. Um, and then, so we've got clothes ready, bags packed, we've got our kitchen prep done, and then just go through some nightly rituals. Every night, tidy the house, at least tidy that kitchen and family room area. If you can't get to the rest, just make sure those are good so that when people come down, they have a sense of calm and they're feeling good about starting their day. That night too, it's important to go ahead and get to bed on time. Getting to bed, having your alarm set, turning the TV off, plug, plug your phone in and then go to bed so that you are ready. So that leads us to the fourth point is pull off. You're gonna pull this off the morning of. You've planned ahead, you've done your primary prep, you've done your pre-prep, now you're gonna pull off. So first thing, when the alarm goes off, you might wanna keep your alarm across the room if you have a tr trouble with the snooze button because getting up late is definitely gonna add stress to your day. When you w wake the kids up in ample time, if, if they don't use alarms, um, maybe just a soft touch, a warm good morning, turn the light on. What we're trying to avoid is a rush, rush, hurry mentality. We're just trying to encourage calm and peace. So that's the way we're gonna get up in the morning in order to be a, have a stress-free morning. And then in the kitchen, what are we gonna do? Well, someone needs to unload the dishwasher. And if you have a preschooler in the home, I love to have ages kids three and up do the dishwasher every day because that's something, it is a very defined, well-defined job and it teaches sorting and things like that. I like to invest in the little, you know, non-breakable plates and things so that they're able to do that. You will wanna pull out sharp knives and things like that if it's a younger kid. Or if you've just got an early bird who wants to get their job for the day out of the way early, then go ahead and do that. Or if you don't mind it, 
you could empty the dishwasher while they're eating. I don't like to do the dishwasher, so that's one thing I've always, always uh, delegated. Also, in the kitchen, just thinking about how things are going. Um, don't have the TV on. Just keep things calm and not distracting. If you want to put some music on, I love to put just some uplifting music or cheerful music. Um, I remember I used to always play the song Happy in the morning or at Christmas I play Charlie Brown's Christmas <laughs> music. Uh, I love that. We're going to want to limit phone usage and really just try to focus on what we're doing. We're getting ready for the day, we're connecting with each other, and then we're going out. Another little tip, um, if you like to make eggs for breakfast, we, we make a lot of eggs. One thing that we like to do is use just the small paper plates for the eggs because they will, they're just harder to clean up if, they don't, if they're not cleaned immediately so that they could just be thrown away and the kitchen is still, still good. So then that leads us to the send off. So it's really good. It helps reduce stress if you set an alarm maybe 10 minutes before and just make sure everybody's ready. And then I love to like give the same blessing as they go out the door. Like, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Or if it's an uplifting thought or if it's just an I love you. Um, make good choices, whatever. Um, if you're sending them out the door, that's a great thing to do is just have something that you say to them every day, a blessing, tell them you love them. Um, or if you're driving them somewhere, you could take that time together to say, let's all say what we're grateful for today. And it just starts the day on a positive note. Or if you're walking them to the bus stop, you can do the same thing. So let's review. We've got plan ahead, and that's going to be the weekend before. We've got primary prep to get your family set for success. And then you've got pre-prep, which is the night before. And then you've got the pull-off, the morning of. So if you do all of these things, I can promise you, you're going to have a miracle in your kitchen in the morning. You're going to have a miracle morning, and that is going to be awesome. And you might want to check your gas level on the weekend, too, so that you don't end up in the same predicament that I was in that one crazy morning. So I am so glad that you joined me for this time. Thank you so much. If you are interested in going a little deeper or you're saying, you know what, tell me more about this organizing, setting your, your family up for success, you might want to look at joining the Transform Your Home in Three Days Challenge. And you can find that at brenna-stoll.com forward slash transform dash three dash areas dash opt dash in. So they've got dashes between those. So it's brenna dash stall.com forward slash transform the number three areas opt in, but those have dashes in them. So do that little challenge. Um, what that will do is just take three areas that impact your day every day. And getting those organized is going to bless your day. So I hope you'll join me for that. Thank you so much. And I hope that you are going to see some miracle mornings in your future. Let's go make every minute count.